welcome, welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. It is the season. <laughs> it's my favorite time of the year. It's the season of love and joy. And there's big love news from the world's least eligible bachelor, Pope Francis. <laughs> Seen here cosplaying as his favorite chess piece. Well, this is just today, right? Mom time. Just as earlier today, his popiness announced that priests would be allowed to bless same-sex relationships. Wow. Wow. Holy cow. Bravo, Pope Francis. It's about damn time. Now, who knows? Who knows? You know, that's very exciting. Who knows? Now that the door's been opened, maybe someday we'll finally see a gay priest. <laughs> now, this new policy, this new policy was announced today, and instead of with an encyclical, the Vatican just released rainbow smoke. <laughs> and it was very exciting. It's good to kick off, kick off the season that way. And uh, it is December 18th, and it's beginning to look a lot like fascism, thanks to Donald Trump. <laughs> Over the weekend in, was this New Hampshire? In New Hampshire, he had some pretty disturbing things to say about immigration. You know, when they let, I think the real number is 15, 16 million people into our country, when they do that, we got a lot of work to do. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. Poisoning the blood of them. <laughs> that, is that is absolutely disgusting. Also, not true. The blood of our country is not being poisoned by immigrants. It's being poisoned by dipping pizza in ranch dressing. <laughs> the statement is horrifying in and of itself, but it gets even worse when you realize the term blood poisoning was used by Hitler in his manifesto, Mein Kampf. Now, as you can imagine, as you can imagine, people are upset that he's quoting a genocidal maniac in his stump speeches. But a Mike Pence aide defended Trump saying, I think it's highly unlikely that Donald Trump has ever read Mein Kampf. <laughs> Right, because it's a book. <laughs> he probably got the version with pictures. Mine first, Kampf. <laughs> now, that's also upsetting. That's also, also, it's also a very upsetting image. Very upsetting image. <laughs> Obviously, Trump's words are indefensible, so Lindsey Graham defended them. We're talking about language. I could care less what language people use as long as we get it right. Yeah. What language our leaders use does not and has never mattered. That's why the Constitution starts with, we the plu please of the untidied yabba dabba water to water to dang dang hum and 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 it wasn't just Lindsey Graham. Tennessee rep uh, Tim Burchett also said stupid things. You well know I'm, a, I'm from East Tennessee and we don't usually talk like that. And he's from New York and that's the way folks, he, he's Trump being Trump. Yeah. Yeah, we here in New York all talk like authoritarians. I remember, who can forget this classic scene from Midnight Cowboy? Hey, I'm goose-stepping here. I'm goose-stepping here. Give me some Liebenstrom. <laughs> now, Trump didn't only paint a dark fascist future. He also looked fondly back on his fascist past. You had a certain gentleman behind the desk, that beautiful, resolute desk in the Oval Office. What was his name? His name was Trump, happened to be Trump. But it was all of you, actually. In a certain sense, you were all sitting behind that desk. So in a certain sense, you're all in a lot of trouble for what you did. <laughs> behind that desk, 91 charges, woo! What were you thinking? <laughs> Taking those classified documents, and don't get me started on your family life. You never remembered Eric's birthday, so in a certain sense, you're the terrible dad, not me. <laughs> now, it's no surprise that a lot of people don't want Trump, but a lot of people also don't want Biden. According to new polls, few U.S. adults will be satisfied with a Biden-Trump rematch. As one voter put it, this is probably the most uniquely horrible choice I've had in my life. <laughs> Spoken like a man who's never had to choose a bathroom stall at the Port Authority. <laughs> that one... That one right there has, uh... That one somehow has three feet in it, and, uh... <laughs> and in that one, I can hear the toilet crying. <laughs> oh, speaking of New York cesspools, Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> a month ago... Was it a month? M multiple months ago? 
Months ago, Giuliani was found liable for defaming two Georgia election workers with lies that were so damning those workers were forced to go into hiding. Well, last week, a jury had to decide how much Rudy would have to pay those election workers. And keep in mind, they were seeking $43 million. Well, on Friday, the jury ordered Giuliani to pay them $148 million. $105 million more than they asked for. <laughs> it's a situation known in legal terms as... <laughs> easy, easy. Now, no one's sure how much of this judgment Rudy will actually be able to pay because his net worth is unknown. Although a financial statement acquired during discovery listed his personal assets as two empty Franzia boxes, <laughs> and a paper bag labeled backup teeth. <laughs> Point is, Rudy needs cash, and he needs it real quick. He's gonna have to stop making videos on Cameo and start making videos on OnlyFans. <laughs> now. No? No? Okay. Once it was all over, Rudy told reporters that this isn't over. Of course, there's very, very little I could say right now. I have to analyze this. Obviously, possibly we'll move for a new trial. Certainly we'll appeal. I'm sorry, Rudy. I couldn't hear what you were saying over what is going on with your staffer's hair. <laughs> I, it looks, it really looks like his barber died mid-cut. That <laughs> it's like he's buying a toupee on the installment plan. I'm, I don't think AI has finished rendering him yet. <laughs> Turn, turning to football news, Taylor Swift, yesterday... <laughs> wow. Wow. Yesterday, her boyfriend's team was in Foxborough, Mass, doing what teams do in Foxborough, and that's smacking the bejesus out of the New England Patriots. <laughs> but at one point... At one point, the refs took mercy on the Pats when what looked like pass interference against Travis Kelsey was not called. Now, clearly, Taylor was furious that Travis did not get the call because cameras caught her saying some words you won't hear on CBS. <laughs> People have some theories about what she was saying, but I don't think Taylor was cursing. I believe it was at that moment she realized that she forgot her favorite mid-game treat, the fudge! She the woman loves fudge. She likes fudge, I guess. Feels like every week brings us new tidbits of Taylor news. In fact, USA Today recently hired a reporter dedicated full-time to coverage of Taylor Swift. Well, we here at The Late Show will not be out tay -tayed. <laughs> So we are hereby dedicating one of our writers to covering only Taylor Swift. Please welcome Late Show Team Taylor, Glenn Eichler. Glenn. <laughs> Hi, Glenn. It's me. Hi. I'm the writer. It's me. <laughs> okay, Glenn, uh, so you got this job because you're our diehard Swifty. What's the latest with Taylor? Well, Steve, as we all know, tis the damn season for Tay's birthday celebration last week in NYC. But it's a good thing Karma is her boyfriend because real beau Travis Kelsey was not saying welcome to New York as he did not attend the party. I sure hope there's no bad blood. Glenn, I, I have a suspicion that you don't know her music at all. You just Googled Taylor Swift song titles right before this segment. Well, shake it off, Steve. <laughs> it's like I always say, Drops of Jupiter live cover from the Speak Now World Tour album. I apologize, Glenn. You clearly know your stuff. Glenn Eichler, everybody. <laughs> Th thanks, Glenn. Taylor and Travis aren't alone. There's also romance on Capitol Hill because a Senate staffer was caught having sex and filming it in a hearing room. Well, certainly gives new meaning to the word staffer. <laughs> the below the beltway activity allegedly took place in the same room where nominees to the Supreme Court are grilled by senators. Yes, they were doing it in the room where they picked the Supreme Court. So in a way, we've all been screwed there. <laughs> but, really? That one? I had my doubts. 
I had my doubts on that one. I apologize. But in light of this congressional news, they're going to have to update Schoolhouse Rock. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I just got railed on Capitol Hill. We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Saturday Night Live's Keenan Thompson annual performance by Olivia Rodrigo. But when we come back, Abby and I have some first drafts of holiday cards. Join us for two.